So, hello everybody. Welcome to our webinar at Bironet. We're talking about our Bironet hybrid appliance, about use cases and a live demonstration. With me, I have Max. He's a developer and an expert in hypervisor, and he's uh, both working in the technical support and also in the development team. So he he knows our products very, very well. And me, I'm Christian. I'm the CEO and CTO of the company. And the, the webinar, it will be split in two parts. I will give you a little presentation about um, the functions, the general functions, and about the, um, the use cases of the appliance. And then later, Max will give us a live demo so you can get a feeling and uh, see how the appliance actually works in terms of configuration and so on. So then let's just dive in. Here you can see our new appliance, which actually is an appliance that we had uh, before. We, the modular appliance is now finally back. And the, the nice thing is it has now more module slots compared to our, our former hybrid appliance. And it is lower in price, so it uh, targets smaller markets, smaller offices um, again. Yeah, this appliance is based on our SPC arch architecture. The old appliance was based on the normal gateway architecture, so it could only hold two modules. And this new appliance can hold three modules. And here you can see an example, a small appliance with four BRI or four times analog can be bought for a list price of under 1,000 euros already. As always, you can mix and match the modules. So you can have PRI modules, multiple ones, or mix with PRI and with analog. So you are flexible with our solution as always. And um, in general, our solution is always, um, we, we have in mind when we develop it, um, that, it is, uh, that we take complex technology and make it easy to use. So, for example, in the gateway, we use the, those complex telephony protocols like ISDN and analog and so forth. And we make it easy to use in terms of an easy web interface and um, accessible via VoIP and so on and so forth. And the same goes for the appliance because in the appliance, the heart of the appliance is basically the, the Birunet OS, the hypervisor OS, which runs in the appliance and allows virtualization of various tasks, which we will see later. And um, again, we uh, have our web interface, which makes it easy to set up and easy to configure. It has a cloud connection, so with the Beer in the Cloud, it can be centrally managed, and it is extendable in terms of modules and open and agnostic in terms of operating systems that you can install. What is a UCPE? Yeah, well, a UCPE, this is a buzzword. It is it is basically a universal customer premise equipment, which means it is a device that is positioned at the end customer side, and there it can then run virtual network functions. And um, essentially, a virtual network function is a virtual machine, which can be, for example, an IPvX or uh, a fax server or a router, router or a firewall, things like that. And uh, often UCPEs have hardware, like multiple network interfaces, LAN, WAN, or, or such. And um, some UCPEs, like the Beirut one, has also telephony interfaces, like analog and ISDN. Often, things like backup and restore are also part of the UCPE function set, and um, sometimes also cloud management concept. If you look at the small office side of the customer, then uh, you will find yeah, various devices. So often there will be different uh, switches from different vendors. There, will, there are the workstations, there are different servers of various vendors. Again, a backup concept maybe for some of those servers. Then uh, we see our IPBX, we see a media gateway, hopefully Beronet, and which connects um, analog devices like effects or something. IP phones and so on, and we've got the firewall and router to connect to the internet. And of course, uh, since not only since the Corona crisis, but in general, there's also the home office people. And so the question is, can we put some of those functions into a universal customer premise equipment to reduce the complexity and, and make it all a little bit more digital? And um, so we, we can try to address servers and the backup concept. We can try to address some of the switches and firewall connectivities and so on. 
and maybe even um, the IPvX and the media gateway. And eventually, we can also look at the home office and see um, if we can position in UCP in a meaningful way over there. And so the idea is to replace all those uh, systems and put them into virtual machines so that servers run as little virtual machines. We have the router and firewall um, running as a software virtual machine and IPvX running here. And then the hypervisor takes care of all those virtual machines. And in the hardware layer, we uh, we got our LAN and RAN interface for the connection to the internet and analog and ICM connections for yeah traditional uh, devices and ICM backup, for example. And then um, on the home office side, uh, a small VoIP-only UCPE, maybe um, without telephony interfaces, can also be positioned with the router software that is used uh, by the by the customer. And this allows to, for example, create a local company network at the home office site so that the laptop is then connected to the internal interface of the UCPE instead of being part of the home network. And this way, um, the internal network of the UCPE can be in a way secure uh, so that nobody can access it from, from all the other home members. And uh, the UCP could then um, have a, a VPN connection, for example, towards the central UCP. And this way, the home office workers can uh, securely be part of the office network. So this is the basic uh, concept. So uh, why would you choose Baronet <laughs> as, as the UCP that you would like to have? Of course, there are um, various reasons. Uh, the first and one of the most important is that we've chosen a type 1 hypervisor. So we are using uh, Xen as, as the hypervisor. And type 1 means that most of the resources of the, of the hardware can be assigned to the virtual network functions or to the virtual machines. This means that the hypervisor itself just uses a tiny bit of the resources and most of the resources are then provided to the VMs. Besides that, the device is cloud managed. So all of you that uh, eventually use Baronet devices already can enjoy the Bero cloud with, with the appliance as well. And of course, it's very energy efficient because we, we are using hardware, a mainboard and a CPU, which has virtual machine functions, so it, it has enhancements for, for starting VMs, but uh, it's still a passive cooled system. So there's no uh, fan, the hard disk is not moving, it's all SSD. This way it's, uh, it's consuming very little power and makes no noises. And then it's also expandable via our modules, so all the modules are available. <clears throat> and of course, it's easy to configure via the web interface, as we will see in a, in a minute. Okay, so hey, good day everyone. My name is Max uh, and I want to show you a little live demonstration of our Beronet uh, UCPE device, our appliance. Uh, we start with the most important configurations options, how you can import and export virtual machines and also explain a bit how the technology works in general. Uh, at the end, I will also show a first setup with an example scenario. The scenario will likely be a 3CX telephony system that I will then connect uh, to the internal Baronet gateway that is built into the same device as Christian uh, showed previously. Um, this allows uh, the system to be sort of an all-in-one telephony solutions for, for smaller companies that maybe don't even have a server rack in their office, um, but they still want to rely on their own hardware. Yeah, so we have this UCPE. This is the dashboard. Here we can see how the virtual machines use the resources, but we will check this out later. Um, first, we want to discuss some of the more important configurations options. We have here in the settings, uh, the network configuration. For a start, the appliance has two separate Ethernet uh, ports. The first one uh, will be usually used um, as a default LAN interface, and this is where the internal ZIP gateway will also be connecting to the network via an internal bridge. Um, keep in mind that both systems will receive an individual IP address to access the web GUI. Then we can also check out the WAN interface. And the second port can be controlled freely here. Um, you can dedicate this port to a specific virtual machine if it's set to controlled by VM. Then you can connect the port directly to, to the VM. Um, or you can um, set it 
to, to static or DHCP, and then you can create sort of a LAN WAN setup in order to connect two networks together. And this can be used, for example, if you want to install a firewall or an SPC software that manages the traffic from one network to another one. You can also set the NTP server here. That is usually very useful. So then we go to the security settings. You can find the obvious things here, like uh, HTTPS uh, certificates uh, to have a more secure connection. You can set the GUI password, which, which obviously should be changed uh, from the default. You can also set the API password here. Our appliance has a small API that can be used um, to check the status of the VMs and also start and stop them. Um, you can also connect via SSH. You can set a password here. And if you have some Linux expertise, you can manage the device here too. Running on the device, you can check this in the system information. On software um, is an Alpina Linux with the Xen hypervisor to manage the virtual machines. Um, we can also here see in the network tab the MAC addresses of all the network interfaces that are currently connected. And here we can also see the internal um, gateway. This is a VeroNet VoIP card. So we can also check out the remote management tab. Here you can simply um, log in with your cloud account and then establish a connection to the Vero cloud. I can open this uh, really quick here. This is uh, how it looks, for example. From here, you can access the GUI via a secure SSH tunnel, so you don't even have to be on-premise to manage your device with a simple click on this button over here. You can also set tasks. For example, you can start and stop VMs at specific times or schedule a backup. And you can monitor your device. You can set an alert if uh, the VM crashes, for example, or the CPU load is very high. Then you will be uh, automatically informed uh, via email. This is uh, how to manage the appliance via the cloud. But now we get to the interesting part, um, the virtual machine. As Christian explained uh, before, you can virtualize most network functions in their own dedicated virtual machine. Um, this virtual machine then acts completely independent from all the other virtual machines and as such is very secure and efficient. It's easy to deploy, it is easy to backup, and if one system fails or is compromised, the other network functions won't be affected by this. But how do we install a network function? Uh, we can simply use ISO files. We have over here the virtual machines tab, and we can, um, for example, visit the market here. Here in the market, there it contains a few ISO images that can be downloaded directly on the device. And currently we have some telephony systems like 3CX and IPTAM here, but we also offer different firewalls and routers um, that can directly be downloaded here. I will, for example, download a monowall. It's a very small ISO, so it should be quick. Now it's uh, set as a background task and downloading here. And when that is finished, uh, it will be accessible here in the media library. We have now here the monowall ISO, and we can use it later to install a virtual machine with that. Yeah, with a simple click, you can just download it. Mm. You can also import your own ISO images if you want. Yeah, and here you can also manage uh, virtual volumes. Um, this is probably a good time to talk about um, virtual volumes and how they are managed. We use a technology here called LVM that stands for Logical Volume Manager. I have a small overview picture here. It basically allows us to manage the storage space on the device very flexibly and efficiently. Um, since you can freely add more storage devices or hard disks, physical volumes over here, um, you can add them to a volume group, which then allows the device to create virtual volumes that then act like normal hard drives for the virtual machine. So you're very flexible on how, many, how much space you want to give to, to a virtual machine. And you can also change it very seamlessly. Just a small X course. Um, let's get to the backups. We, the logical volume manager makes it very easy to assign storage space for backups, um, but you can also connect external storages like USB sticks or SSDs like I did here. If we go to external storage, we see that I have a small SSD connected here. And as you can see, you can also add this external hard drive to the volume manager with this little button here. 
And then you can also use the space on this uh, device for your virtual machines. Um, you can also easily import backups again from the external device. So I have, for example, here a PFSense on my external SSD, and I can just restore it again. And we will check out later how to create such a backup. And you can also upload a VM here. This is, for example, useful if you want to set up the working VM in VirtualBox before. Then you can export it and simply upload it here, and it will be instantly available as a virtual machine. Okay, let's get into the first setup of such a virtual machine. As described before, I will install a 3CX telephony system and then connect a gateway that is also in the device to it and make a small test call. Um, the gateway has an FXS analog module installed currently, uh, and that allows the connection for different analog devices, for example, a fax or a phone, or you can also have an ISDN telephony uh, system connected there. So there are lots of options and you're very flexible. Um, when we go to the dashboard, we can simply add another virtual machine with a little plus here. And then we just give it a name. We just name it for test, for example. We can assign uh, a few D resources. We can give it some, some uh, RAM and more disk space, depending on how much we have. We can set the start and boot button, which obviously um, starts the VM on boot. Um, then we need to choose the ISO image that we want to use for the first boot. Set a console password and then simply click create. So now we can take a good look at the management of such a virtual machine. We have uh, lots of information here. Yeah, we can start it really quick so we don't have to do it later. Okay, now the VM is started, it's running. We can see um, the CPU usage, the memory usage. We can also, when the uh, VM is stopped, you can assign more or less resources depending on what you need. And you can set the boot device later if you want to boot from a USB stick, for example. You can change the network settings. You can here choose if you want to dedicate uh, the WAN port, for example, directly to the VM. And you can also choose a driver that uh, driver that shall be used. Here you can assign more hard drive space, load different um, ISO images. Yeah, and here for the important backup settings, here you can see you can create a, a backup on the external device uh, spontaneously whenever you want, or you can automate it, which is recommended. For example, you can have a daily backup at 3 a.m. And we want to keep the last three backups uh, on the external. And if we then save it every day at 3 a.m., a backup is created and automatically saved on the external hard drive. OK, so we can then connect to the virtual machine via NoVNC. This is basically a program that allows us to render the graphical output of the virtual machine to our web browser here. So we don't need an HDMI cable or anything. Um, and from here, we can uh, continue our normal ins uh, installation of the operating system. Um, but we won't do that today. This will usually take a few minutes, but we can skip this. I have a VM already prepared. So we go to the dashboard and we see that uh, we have the 36 webinar VM already running. And we can check the VNC console. Here I checked out my IP address. Usually 36 tells you what the IP address is on the first setup. Um, and then we can um, connect to the system right here. And this is just a normal Manila 3CX. I have nothing done to it uh, yet, but we will now connect our internal gateway. We have the internal gateway available. We can search it in the gateway category here. And here you can see all the Veronet devices that are currently in the network. Um, now we are in, in our Beronet office, so there are a lot of devices here. Usually there will be only the one that is connected directly to the appliance, which is this one. Now we want to connect the 3CX uh, to the gateway so we can make a test call. We have non, not configured anything here as well. This is also how it came out of production, basically. Um, and on the 3CX, we can go to SIP trunks and simply add a gateway here then uh, it will be already be uh, giving us the information here. We have two slots here. We only want to use one though. Um, and then we just create it. 
36 makes it very simple. Then we only need the IP address of the device, which we can enter here. And then we can uh, save it already. Um, it's red now because the device didn't register yet. You can click here on generate device config. This will bring us um, to the installation wizard. And from here, we just enter the the port of the of the 3CX. And we also need the authentication options right here. So we want to connect our FXS port. We connect port one for now. And then we obviously want our password here. And the authentication ID is 10,000 as per usual with 36. Um, yeah, then we simply click on next and the wizard will automatically create a config for us. If we then activate, the device um, will execute the configuration, um, set everything as we need it and restart. But this may take uh, a bit of time. Yeah, we can go back to the dashboard. Here you can see for the whole system, how many resources are used, the RAM um, and the, the disk throughput. You can see how many disk space you still have available. Um, and if you want to check out per VM, you can also have a little graphical interface here. Okay, hopefully the gateway is back now. Oh, it still needs a bit. Ah, and we're back, very good. Then we simply log in and we should uh, see the normal configuration that is automatically done by the wizard. We can, for example, go to dial plan here and we can see that a simple zip to analog rule is created um, and an analog port group is created. And also a zip group is created with the correct user credentials. Now on the 36, it should also go to green, very nice. Yeah, and then we can um, try to make a test call. And I will try to call myself here. Ah, now we can see here that um, we get the call. Hello, hello. Test, test. Ah, so we can hear. Oh, very good. And we can just hang off again. Yeah, and this is um, basically how to simply connect um, your small gateway to the virtual machine that is running, for example, a telephony system for the 36, for example. And you can also add lots of different uh, network functions here. Um, it makes it very simple to have your whole voice over IP infrastructure in one hardware device. And additionally, you can realize other network functions like firewall, you can have a router, you can even have a file server if you want to connect bigger storage systems. And I hope you were all able to learn something new, understand how the system works in general. And if you have further questions, then we are happy to answer them. Thank you very much for taking your time and uh, participating in the webinar. If you are interested in buying the appliance or in um, participating in the training, just let us know. Just send us a mail to sales at leonard.com. Um, the appliance is also available at our distributors um, all over the world. If you have any questions, reach out to us. Um, we are happy to answer them. And other than that, I wish you all a very fantastic afternoon and see you all soon.